A couple months ago, I came out with a video where I argued that the AI models we have today may have hit another wall of advancement. Just like with GPT-4, you stop seeing the models really advance in a major way until we got to the reasoning thinking models. That was the next major breakthrough. I argued that we've currently hit another wall with AI model advancement. In the comments, people were saying I am an idiot, basically. Positive delusion. You genuinely don't know what you're talking about. I say that sincerely. This video is delusional. Pick a new topic to speak about. This is pure cope. Dev jobs are gone. Nobody will pay you because AI is simply better. Everybody was basically like this guy when it came to GPT-5. Uh, GPT-5. Is that going to be just all smarter than all of us here? I cannot tell you how many times I heard that GPT-5 is going to replace all developers. It's going to be AGI. I remember one of my best friends saying coding is toast. There will be no more coders after GPT-5. I really tried to say I really don't think that's going to happen. It's partially because of listen to this answer from Sam Altman. I mean, if you think you're like way smarter than O3, then maybe you have a little bit of a ways to go. But I like, 3 is already pretty smart. <laughs> Did you hear that? He was basically saying ChatGPT 5 is not really going to be that much smarter than O3. Even Theo originally got caught up in all of the hype. He was making it sound like GPT-5 was going to replace all developers. But after launch, he came out with this video with the thumbnail, GPT-5 sucks. I think it's fair to say that we need to have a talk about the GPT-5 launch. It didn't quite go how I expected. And uh, if you've seen the comments section on my recent videos, you'll see just how much people did not get what they thought they were getting with this model. There's a lot of layers to this, and many of them are actually, to some extent, my fault. I want to take the time to go through all of the details with you guys, from what my experience was like working with OpenAI, to how I was compensated, to how things have changed since launch, to how my own expectations were not met, to most importantly, how the experience I'm having now using GPT-5 is significantly worse than the experience I had when I was testing it before. In other words, no, I was not delusional. If you're looking for the next major breakthrough in AI model improvement, you're looking in the wrong place. I think from this point forward, we're gonna see incremental improvements to the models, but I'm not expecting any major breakthrough moments with model advancements anymore. I think the next major breakthrough has to do with context engineering. This is a new term that Andre Karpathy helped coin. Everyone's talking about it. They're saying context engineering is the new vibe coding. In this article, they argued context engineering is 10x better than prompt engineering and 100x better than vibe coding. The reason so many people are talking about context engineering is because I think it really is the next major breakthrough in AI. These foundation models are amazing, but they're not mind readers. They don't know everything about your specific project. And so they can't give you the results you're looking for without context. LLMs need another layer built on top of them to be able to respond accurately to your requests. Dexter Horthy, the founder of Human Layer, recently said this at a Y Combinator event. Um, and I'll talk about the structure of this file a little bit more. Um, why are we obsessed with context? Because LLMs are pure functions. I think Jake said a lot of interesting things about this. The only thing, other than like training your own models and messing with the temperature, the only thing that improves the quality of your outputs is the quality of what you put in, which is your context window. Um, and in a coding agent, your agent is constantly looping over, determining what's the right next tool to call, what's the right next edit to make, and the only thing that determines its ability to do that well is what is in your context window going in. And uh, we'll throw this one into everything is context engineering. Everything that makes agents good is context engineering. So we're going to optimize for correctness, completeness, size, and trajectory. I'm not going to talk about a lot about trajectory because it's very vibes based right now. Um, but to invert that. The worst thing to have in your context window is bad info. Second worst thing is missing info, and then just too much noise. And if you wanted an equation, we made this dumb equation. Um, Jeff figured this out. Uh, well, Jeff, lots of people f are figuring this out, but Jeff Huntley works on Sourcegraph AMP, um, which I know Beyond was supposed to be speaking tonight. I'm sure, I hope he will appreciate this talk uh, in the spirit of what they've been talking about. Um, you got about 170,000 tokens. The less of them you use to do the work, the better results you will get. In this video, Dexter said that his team almost never codes anymore. They focus completely on the context window because they've discovered if they can give enough relevant context to the AI, the AI actually can write 
accurate bug-free code. We've actually learned this too at fingochat.ai. We've been obsessing over context engineering before context engineering was even a term. If you go to fingochat.ai and sign up for free, you can click the download the app button to download the desktop app. Fingochat is powered by ChatGPT5, so the results are just as great as you would get at ChatGPT. But the big improvement with Fingochat is the ability to engineer your context data in what's called the train of thought, which can be found up here. What we have found is if you put enough relevant context in the train of thought, the AI will actually produce the results you're looking for. If you've downloaded the desktop app, you can sync your local file tree for the project you're working on to the train of thought. You can select the relevant files related to whatever you're working on in the project. You can put links to up-to-date documentation. And every time you ask FingoChat a question, FingoChat will run a new Git request to the URLs you provide. So this solves the out-of-date documentation problem with all the LLMs out there, which are normally trained on one to two-year-old data. Your AI will always know the most up-to-date documentation. You can also put text, code, a task list, a normal list, a spreadsheet, and I'll show you a quick example of how great the responses can be. In a project I was working on, I noticed a really complicated bug. In my train of thought, I added the file tree so the AI could see the file structure, and I added a bunch of related files to the file tree. That was it. And then I just asked this one question. The AI looked through all the relevant code that I added. It told me to update this file, this file, and this file. So three separate files and it instantly fixed the bug. Normally this would have taken me hours to solve, especially since this was a code base I wasn't super familiar with. I didn't build the app originally, but with FingoChat, I was able to solve the problem in under five minutes. This all is why I think context engineering really is the next major breakthrough in AI. I think Sam Altman and others have been indicating that we should stop expecting so much from AI models. Realize that the AI models we have today are already amazing. They just need things like context engineering built on top of it, like what FingoChat.ai has added. And then the results are pretty remarkable. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think context engineering is the next major breakthrough in AI development? Or do you think the AI models will continue to get drastically better? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.